Well, welcome back. Um, previous clip, I just posted a clip about clustering overview. However, now it's gonna be another uh, series about a partition-based clustering and a key clustering algorithm in this one that would, I would like to share with you is named k-means algorithm. So let's look at the strategy uh, of k-means which also be a part of partitioning style algorithm of clustering. Okay. So the algorithm of partition-based clustering usually imply that uh, there will be a set of initialized cluster centers so and the algorithm will carry on by trying to compute how each da data item is far or having a distance from these initial cluster centers then there will be a series of assignment the winner cluster center to that data item or data record and once the whole phase where the algorithm uh, finish assignment to each data item at the end of the phase the calculation of the updated cluster centers will be done and the algorithm will carry on the next phase just in the similar manner and in, uh, in intermediate steps there could be uh, cluster assignment change for uh, each record until in the final stage in the phase uh, n minus 1 compared to the next phase phase n you will see that all the cluster assignments to each record do not change at all so then you know the algorithm can be finished so let me summarize again so in this case the step start with number one compute a distance of each data item to each centers okay so in this state then you will get to do the assign the minimum distance between the cluster number to that data item okay so the next step is once the whole set of data has been calculated and been assigned cluster centers then we are re-update the new cluster center by the means value of each attribute so this is the phase three and then the algorithm continue repeatedly until in the final stage if the all the cluster assignment in phase n minus one are the same exactly in the phase n you know the two consecutive phases if that's the case then we can determine the stopping condition and report the cluster assignments so these are the major strategies so let's look at the example of k-means result here you can see that on the left is before k-means and after you got in this case you got what appear to be k equal to 3 and keep in mind again it's the cluster analysis so you also get the virtual cluster center in each cluster usually the cluster center is from you perform the average of um, each attribute of each data item in cluster okay so or you can say that or you can call it the means perform a means calculation of each attribute of each data item in 
uh, cluster. So we will get at the end, we get cluster center, or we also call it centroid. Okay, so I had another name called centroid. And we can use centroid for the future reference. So let's do the numerical example here. Okay. So for example, if we will try to do k means with k equal to 2, uh, it's a precondition to try to use k means. So that's a little bit tricky when uh, both the analyst or the end user might not know the proper k. But let's assume we want to do k equal to 2. The next thing is determine the distance measure. Here we will use Manhattan distance. And here we had random the cluster 1 center to be 1 and 2 and cluster 2 center to be 3 and 4. So let's look at how the algorithm will proceed. So in this case, I will calculate okay, the distance of C1 and record. Okay. R stands for record. And I also will calculate the distance of C2 to record. Okay. And we will look at assign cluster. So let's look at uh, record 1. In record 1, the data point is 1, 1. So the distance to uh, C1 is, Manhattan distance is 1. And distance to cluster C2, 3, 4. Okay, the result is 2 plus 3, which is 5. Okay, so in this case, the assigned cluster was, uh, we'll come back to that. And let's look at record 2, record 2, 3 and 5, and 1 and 2. So in this case, uh, the C1 distance is 2 plus 3, which is 5. And the distance to C2 is 1. Now let's work on record 3, 5, 7. So in this case, uh, the distance to C1 is 9, Manhattan distance. And distance to C2, 3, 4, okay, happen to be 2 plus 3, which is 5. Now let's work on the record 4. Record 4, the value of data is 4, 6. So calculate distance to C1 is 3 plus 4, which equal to 7. And 4, 6, calculate distance to C2, which is 3, 4, is 1 plus 2, which is 3. And final row of uh, record 5, value 2 and 3, okay, distance to C1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2, and distance to C2, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So let's see how the assignment will go. So you can see that in this case, the minimum is 1, so C1. The minimum distance is here, so C2. The minimum distance is here too, so C2. Minimum distance is C2 as well. Now you get to see the special case here. You can see that there is a, a tie. So in this case, you can assign to either C1 or C2, but uh, for me, I will go ahead and assign this to C1. Okay. So we just finished, almost finished, but then we have to calculate the update, the update uh, cluster center via the k-means method. So in this case, you can see that C1, there are two members of C1, which is here. And there are uh, three members of 
C2, okay? So in this case, I would write uh, C1 prime equal to, when you add it and calculate average, you have to calculate from their members, their new set of members. So in this case, C1 will calculate from there. So the, the my prime imply that it's a new updated cluster center. So you can see that the means of x axis is mean of one plus two, one plus two divided by two, and the y equal to one plus three divided by two. So equal to one point five and two. Okay. Now let's look at the update cluster two. In this case, these are here, okay? Because two, three, four are together. So in this case, C two prime equals the average of three, four, five. So that's equal to four. And the average or the means of five, seven, six is six. Okay, so now we are ready to update to the new phase. Okay. So let me uh, update the value on the top. All right, so this is done. So this is, we start from phase one. Now we in the phase two. So let's look at phase two. D, let's calculate. Okay, so phase two, the C1 equal to 1.52, and C2 equal to four and six. Okay, I'm just re-update. I didn't want to write the prime anymore. Okay, so now let's calculate. So in this case, D of uh, C1 to R1 equal to, okay, 1, 1 and 1.5, 2. So the distance is 0. 0.5 plus 1, 1. 1.5. D of C1, sorry, C2, R1 equal to, okay, we are talking 1, 1 and 4, 6. So 1, 1 and 4, 6. So that's 3 plus 5, that's 8. Now continue, D of C1 record 2 equal D of C2 record 2 equal to okay so now C2 was 3 and 5 keep that in mind so 3 1.5 the difference 1.5 uh, the difference in y is 3 so that's 4.5 and C2 R2 4 6 and 3 5 so the difference is also 2 so continue D of C1 row 3 equal to D of C2 row 3 equal to, okay, let's calculate row 3 here, 5 and 7. So 5, 7 and 1.5, that's 3.5. And that's 3.5, so into 5, so that's 8.5. Okay, and C2 is 4, 6, so that is make the distance to row 3 come out to be 2. Continue to row 4, so distance of C1 row 4 equal to distance of C2 row 4 equal to, okay, so row 4 is 4, 6. 4, 6 and the cluster 1, the different Manhattan is that uh, 2.5 plus 4, so 
so that's uh, six point five. And row four to the cluster two. Row four is four six, and four six so the distance is zero. So the last calculation of the update distance of C one and row five. So row five was two three here. So two three and one point five two. The distance is one point five. And similarly for the row five two three and four six. So the Manhattan distance is five. Okay. So now let's look at the winner. So again, the winner here, the minimum distance in each data point matching is the smallest distance. Okay. So you can see that in that case, the cluster assign C1, C2, 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 C1. So in this case, phase 2, same cluster assignment as phase 1. Okay, so therefore, stop k means. Okay. And the answer to the final cluster assignment will be report in the assignment, the latest one in phase, in this case, phase 2. That is record 1, go to cluster 1, record 5, go to cluster 1, and the remainder 3 records go to cluster 2. Alright, thank you, and hopefully we'll come back with more clips for hierarchical clustering.